Hello everyone. Welcome to yet another session of our NPTEL on nonlinear and adaptive control. I am Srikant Sukumar from Systems and Control IIT Bombay. Uh, we are into the eighth week of our lectures on nonlinear adaptive control, and we are already well underway into designing algorithms uh, that can drive systems such as the spacecraft orbiting the earth that we see in the background so last time uh, we started to look at um, you know model reference adaptive control we already introduced the problem uh, in the previous week along with the assumptions uh, and and of course the matching conditions which are very very critical um, Subsequently, we started the design for the adaptive controller in the usual approach of starting with the known parameter case. Uh, and then, of course, moving on to the unknown case via the certainty equivalence approach. The uh, difference, of course, is how we chose the target system, right? So, the target system was in this case uh, chosen in a very very uh, smart way and was inspired from the reference model itself okay so this was uh, what helped us to design the controller for the known case and of course going from the <clears throat> known to the unknown case was it's always very easy because we just simply apply the certainty equivalence principle right so that's really the trick Okay, we apply the certainty equivalence principle in order to go from the known to the unknown case. Now, uh, the difference now that uh, becomes apparent to us uh, is that the parameters are not the scalars or vectors, but in fact, they are matrices, right? So it's k tilde and l tilde and k star and l star, which are all matrices, right? We've already made an assumption that we know the uh, sign of L star, right? So L star is symmetric definite and we know whether it's positive definite or negative definite, right? So using this fact that we know the sign of L star, we define a matrix gamma, which is positive definite symmetric, which uh, will appear uh, sort of frequently in the Lyapunov analysis, right? So using this gamma, we now write our closed loop uh, dynamical system in this particular form right so this is the form that we would have obtained if there was a uh, no parameter error or for the case when we do know the parameter this is exactly what would be the uh, closed loop dynamics but because we do not know the parameter there are terms in the parameter errors yeah which is what you have commonly in adaptive control and we choose a corresponding Lyapunov function using the fact that AM is a Hurwitz matrix, and uh, just like you would have used the norm, uh, a square norm for the vector case, or you know just a square for the scalar case, we use a sort of norm, a weighted norm for this uh, matrix case also, and this is defined via the trace of the matrix, uh, k tilde transpose gamma k tilde, and similarly l tilde transpose gamma l tilde. All right. So this is uh, where we were. So I'm going to mark uh, the beginning here as lecture 8.2. All right. So I'm going to mark this as lecture 8.2. So, uh, so this we already uh, saw last time is in fact a valid Lyapunov function. In fact, it can be very easily claimed to be strictly positive definite also. Yeah. So no worries there. Uh, we also know what is the trace operation. It is essentially the sum of the diagonal elements of a matrix. We also have certain nice properties of the trace. Like, I mean, it doesn't matter if you do the inner product or the outer product, the trace remains the same. In fact, it doesn't have to be the same matrices either. 
yeah so you can change the sequence of things and uh, the trace doesn't change yeah and that's really what is important right and we will in fact exploit this property so one of the very very key properties of the trace like i said here um, but i can write it in a different color is the trace of a b transpose is equal to trace of b transpose a basically it is agnostic to the sequence in which i do things so i can do a b transpose or i can do b transpose a and vice versa the trace is not going to change so this is one of the very very key properties that we will exploit soon yeah um, now let's take the derivative just like we do all right let's uh, diligently take the derivative and and plug in the closed loop dynamics yeah so we are yet to choose of course the update loss for the k tildas and the l tildas and that is really what we are trying to do with this lyapunov analysis okay great so uh, v dot now remember these are vector operations we have to be very careful right so because it's a vector so I take the derivative of all the terms very carefully. So first I have E transpose P E dot, basically taking the derivative of this and then using the product rule, I have to take the derivative of this term. So E dot transpose P E, okay. And now in this one, I just uh, say twice trace of, you know, derivatives here. Yeah. Honestly speaking, I could have written this also in this way. Yeah, that is, I could have written, uh, I mean, let me actually sort of make this a little bit more clear. So, uh, DDT of trace of say, K tilde transpose gamma K tilde could have been written, right, as trace of k tilde dot transpose gamma k tilde plus trace of k tilde transpose gamma k tilde dot yeah i could have done this yeah i could have done this right uh, but the point is that uh, because this entire thing right is in fact a scalar right so i can i'm free to take a transpose right i'm free to take a transpose and of course transpose of uh i mean it is also true which i hope it is also evident to you that transpose of m sorry trace of m is equal to trace of m transpose so the trace doesn't uh, modify under the transpose so if i take the transpose here right i would get um if i take the transpose here in fact i would get trace of k tilde dot transpose gamma k tilde which is actually the same as this yeah which is actually the same as this and that's why i am directly writing this as twice trace this okay in fact in fact i could have pretty much done the same thing here too yeah let's be clear i could have done the same thing here too uh, because p is a symmetric matrix right so i could have taken the transpose of this and i would have obtained e transpose p e dot which is the same as this right but i am simply writing this separately because i'm going to use the lyapunov equation okay that's it that's the only reason i'm not doing anything magical here this could also be uh, written as twice e transpose p e dot yeah why because this is a scalar this is a scalar transpose of a scalar is the same scalar therefore i'm free to take transpose of any term yeah this is this we this is a trick we use regularly in all our lyapunov analysis for vector equations yeah v is a scalar so each term is a scalar right therefore i'm free to take the transpose of any scalar term because it yields the same scalar term right because i can take transpose of a scalar and end up with the same scalar nothing changes right 
So if I take the transpose of this term, I get E transpose P transpose E. But because P is a symmetric matrix, I get E transpose P E dot. Right? Sorry. Yeah. So E dot E transpose P transpose E dot is the same as E transpose P E dot, which is the same as this term. So I could have written this very well as twice E transpose P E dot. I simply am not choosing not to write it in that way because I want to uh, write the Lyapunov equation or use the Lyapunov equation, right? So what is this? So when I substitute for E dot now, right, in, on both sides here, so this remains as it is, right, for a while. Okay, this remains as it is. Uh, I just use the fact that K tilde dot is equal to minus K hat dot. Okay, and that's what shows up here. Okay. Uh, and that's it okay so so again i have flipped it here this is flipped here and this is also flipped here do not mind yeah i can flip as many times as i want it doesn't change anything okay because trace of a is equal trace of m is equal to trace of m transpose all right great so these terms remain as it is just with the negative sign because the k tilde dot has been changed to k hat dot and similarly l tilde dot has been changed to l hat dot that's what is bringing up the negative sign okay Great. Uh, so, so let's see. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So then, uh, what do we do? We basically um, plug in for the dynamics e dot. That is a closed loop dynamics e dot from here. Okay, that's what you see here. That's it. It's a m e plus sigma l star b m gamma. This thing. And similarly here with the transpose, this guy. Okay. Now, uh, these terms and this term, okay, gets combined to give me this term. This is just the Lyapunov equation. Yeah. Okay. So, if you may, this term, this term, uh, with this term, whatever, gets combined and can be written as E transpose P A M plus A M transpose P E. Okay. And that's actually equal to minus E transpose Q E from the Lyapunov equation corresponding to the am which is a full width or stable matrix okay all right excellent now so that's how i get this nice negative term this is the nice negative definite term that we are always looking out for in the lyapunov analysis so we already have that term yeah and why this is because we chose a nice target system right so we chose uh, this as a target system and that's why we get this nice negative term Okay, and AM is a full width matrix. Okay, so then we, if you look at the rest of the terms, all the terms that remain, uh, which is these guys, these guys, these are all parameter error terms. Okay, so uh, again, this term and this term can also be combined. Similarly, this term and this term can also be combined, and that's what is being done here. These are combined to write them as two signum L star um, E transpose. P, B M gamma, and this. Okay, both these terms are exactly the same. Okay, both these terms are again using the logic that V is a scalar, so every term is a scalar. Therefore, I can take transposes as many times as I want. Right. So, so this term combines with this term, right, to give us this two times term. Okay, and we also have the same two coefficient here as you would expect, and in this form. Okay, now if you see, we have a little bit of a funny situation, right? Uh, earlier, when we were doing all this uh, uh, parameter update lord design, uh, we would always get a theta tilde common on the left hand side and all that because it was a scalar, so we could move the theta tilde anywhere. Now the problem that we have here is that the k tilde which we want to take common outside is somewhere in the middle. 
Okay, and these are all matrices, so it's not like I can move it to the left and right arbitrarily. Okay, so this is important to note, right? So this term and this term, right? So so appears somewhere in the middle okay you would ideally want it to be on the left or the right hand side so that we can take things common and whatever cancel it out using k hat dot this is what we've been doing now what do we do well we use nice um, tricks from uh, the trace properties okay so this this is where we uh, see one uh, another trace property so we already know this the trace of m is the trace of m transpose and trace of a b transpose is trace of b transpose it. in fact from these two i can derive this okay so if you so here we are saying that trace of uh, u transpose v where both u and v are vectors are vectors right is the same as trace of u v transpose so basically if you have vectors okay of the same dimension of the same dimension right so so u v has to be vectors in some r k has to be the same dimension otherwise inner product is not defined and you take the inner product that is u transpose v then this is the same as trace of the outer product right so notice that this is a scalar and this is an n by n matrix or a k by k matrix and because i take a trace it becomes a scalar right so both sides are scalar so this one needs to verify of course for our own sanity okay and then we can try to use uh, these results let's try i don't know i mean maybe we maybe it works maybe it doesn't work okay uh, so so let's see so this is actually equal to trace of u transpose v it's a scalar so this is also the same as trace of v transpose u because that's the same scalar take a transpose of a scalar i say that get the same scalar and the trace of a scalar is also the same scalar because a scalar can be seen as a trivial matrix right of a one by one matrix right so the sum of diagonals is just the scalar itself so u transpose v is the same as trace u tran transpose v and trace u transpose v is the same as trace v transpose u because again we're just transposing it using this identity and then finally i can flip the order yeah i'm allowed to flip the order of the operation with the trace okay this is the from this property okay so this this whatever this property that you have uh, can be obtained from the other properties that we already had okay so this is not a new property per se it is in fact just a something prop, uh, something that's derived from the existing property so these two are the most key ones if you remember these uh, you can mostly derive uh, the other important trace equalities all right so great so now we have this very nice trace equality that the inner product is equal to the trace of the outer product of vectors okay and that's what we are going to apply to these terms this term and then this term okay so let's look at each of them so this term the first term so we don't write the sigma l star and all that yeah but you look at the rest of the term okay so so basically we ignore this two signum l star and you look at e transpose pbm gamma k tilde x e transpose pbm gamma k tilde x so if you look at this term uh, i know this is a scalar so what do i do i think of this whole piece right so this this entire piece until here I think of as my uh, u transpose and this is v okay so basically this is of course u 
because I took the transpose and that's V. And I know that the inner product here is the same as trace of the outer product, which is UV transpose. So what do I write it as? I just write this as U. So this whole thing is U. Yeah. It's K tilde transpose gamma BM transpose P E. Yeah. And so this is the U and then this is V transpose. Right. Okay. So I get something like this. All right. We do the same thing on the other term. Yeah. That is also a similar term. It is, if I ignore this because this is just a scalar and can be moved around. So I don't need to worry about this. Uh, I look at the second term, which is E transpose PBM gamma L tilde R. E transpose PBM gamma L tilde R. So similarly, I uh, think of this term. Everything. Okay. Everything before the R. Yeah, everything before the R is my U transpose. So again, this is U. And so this is U transpose V. Right, and the, this is essentially trace of UV transpose. Okay, so what what does this do? Notice in this expression, k tilde is somewhere in between, of no use to us. But in this new expression, k tilde is all the way to the left, and a trace appears. Okay, so earlier there was no trace either. Okay, so and, and why do we need the trace? Because the comparison term in k tilde contains the trace or is within the trace. So obviously I need somehow the trace function to appear here and I also want the k tilde to be somewhere in the left, right? Because here the k tilde appears in the left. Similarly for the l tilde, I here it is somewhere in the middle with no trace. So I want to this to appear in the left inside a trace function and that's exactly what happens. This appears inside a trace function. There is a k tilde transpose in the beginning and then again a trace function and an l tilde transpose in the beginning. So we essentially substitute back into this, this back into the V dot equation. I'm again left with this nice uh, negative definite term. Uh, then I have a twice trace uh, sigma L star is remaining as it is. And then I've taken, because this is a scalar, I can move it around wherever I want. So I move it inside here. Then I take the K tilde gamma out. So I get a sigma L star uh, here. From this term, sigma L star BM transpose PE X transpose. Okay, so I cannot change the sequence of the matrices, so this is fine. Yeah, and notice there is a uh, K tilde transpose gamma here, which I take common. K tilde transpose gamma here, that's taken common. Okay, so I am left with uh, this guy, sigma L star, and this. And a k hat dot here. Okay. Similarly, there is an um, notice that there is an l tilde gamma, l tilde transpose gamma here common, right? So again, l tilde transpose gamma inside the trace common. That's what I take out. And then the sigma l star is here, of course. There is a negative sign. And then I'm left with this term and an l hat dot. Okay. So this is just very careful bookkeeping now. Once I have applied this nice trick, which gives me a trace and also pulls the K tilde and L tilde to the leftmost, I can now take common with the terms here, where the K tilde and the L tilde are in the left. In fact, I take both K tilde and times gamma common and L tilde transpose times gamma common. Okay. And once I have this, I'm in good shape. Yeah, because now I can use my k hat dot to cancel this guy. Similarly, l hat dot to cancel this guy, which is exactly these equations. Yeah. Brings about, of course, the sigma l star. Yeah. So, which is what we've already discussed that we do need to know the sign of l star. Okay. So, we need to know whether it's positive definite or negative definite. This condition or this requirement is exactly identical to knowing the uh, sign of B in the scalar case. So nothing, this is something we cannot avoid, right? So great. So then uh, you 
basically get rid of these terms and all you're left with is this guy yeah and we know that this is because q is positive definite v dot is negative semi definite right not definite because we have additional states k tilde and l tilde so obviously it's not negative definite it's in fact negative semi definite right um, so what can we show we can show that the error signal e goes to zero uh, asymptotically as t goes to infinity this we can do by signal chasing and using babelard's lemma right uh, of course also you can show that these are bounded signals no problem why because simply because v was uh, chosen as a positive definite function containing both uh, e quadratic essentially some kind of quadratic in uh, e k tilde and l tilde and we've also shown that uh, v dot is less than or equal to zero so v is non-increasing function of time so as time progresses v is non-increasing which means that whatever is the initial value of v you cannot actually go beyond it therefore these things cannot go unbounded none of these terms can go unbounded and if none of these terms can go unbounded, they're essentially norms, which means E, K tilde, L tilde cannot go unbounded. Okay. So notice that we've used gamma in the Lyapunov analysis, but gamma doesn't appear anywhere in the update law. It cannot, right? Because gamma is unknown. Yeah, although we constructed this gamma uh, using this uh, using this L star inverse, this is unknown. Therefore, gamma cannot appear anywhere in the update law. Right. So, so again, so this is also so again similar to this absolute value of b that we introduced in the Lyapunov function for the scalar case. All right. So this is again something similar to that. So, so that's it. So we are done. We essentially have a nice model reference adaptive controller. Uh, this is what guarantees uh, tracking. Yeah. Of course, it doesn't guarantee any kind of uh, parameter. Uh, identification again this is again i would say this is something that will um, that requires persistence of excitation and in fact uh, i strongly recommend that you write the if you want to write the dynamical system in a very careful form um, with with e k tilde l k tilde and l tilde as states yeah, if you write uh, the dynamical system in this form uh, with some matrix yeah so d d t with some matrix uh, e but I'm, I'm writing it as a tuple specific very deliberately because k tilde and l tilde are matrices and e is a vector therefore you cannot actually write it in this form you have to vectorize k tilde and l tilde but if you do write it you will get appropriate conditions uh, for persistence uh, of excitation of a particular signal which will guarantee that parameters also uh, converge asymptotically okay so this anyway we've seen this theory i would recommend that you write it in this form and see how it looks all right uh, but yeah i mean we have uh, you know perfect tracking which is what we typically guarantee in adaptive control anyway all right so excellent so this was a uh, model reference adaptive control so what we did today was uh, complete the lyapunov analysis for the model of preference adaptive control problem um, and in the process of the lyapunov analysis we learned a lot about uh, trace and trace properties and how they can be used to construct uh, Lyapunov functions for um, matrix states. Yeah, we also learned about trace properties and how it can help us to manipulate uh, the matrices that appear and move matrices from one location to another so that we can cancel some terms. So we learned some interesting trace properties which are also very useful uh, for a lot of different uh, mathematical analyses. And uh, of course, we were able to prescribe uh, update laws. For these matrix unknowns k tilde uh, k star and l star and we were able to prove perfect tracking uh, which is what we typically seek to guarantee in model reference adaptive control all right so that's sort of the exposition uh, into model reference adaptive control uh, for linear systems uh, we will now subsequently move into a, a new and different set of lectures where we will discuss uh, some other 
and more novel topics. All right. Excellent. So this is where we stop. Uh, thanks. And I hope to see you again soon.